walking in my footsteps. I heard a little voice asking things I didn't know. asleep on the pillow 
And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. There was a great calm. I pray with me this morning, Heavenly Father. Lord, we love you this morning and we honor you today. Lord, I pray this morning, Lord God, for every person that's under the sound of my voice today. Yes. Lord, that our hearts would be open and receptive today to the word that you are about to speak to us this morning. Lord, I pray that we would not leave here the same way that we came in, but every one of us would leave here changed under the power and presence of Your Holy Spirit and the Word that is being spoken today. Lord, let Your Word sink deep into our hearts and our spirits today. Lord, let us hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church today. And I ask you in Jesus' name, everybody in the house of God said, Amen. Amen. I have asked some guys to help me this morning with illustration that I'm going to do, and I'm going to ask them to go ahead and take their place if they would this morning. I want to take our text this morning from verse 36. And it just simply said, And there were also with him other little ships. See, our ministries, our churches, and our lives can sometimes become very selfish. And sometimes I get caught up in my own journey. He caught up in my own purposes and even my own agenda. We've all done it because it's easy to do. But today I do not want to focus on the storm. I don't want to focus on the journey. What I want us to focus on this morning is the little ships and their destination. Yeah. Because on the sea of life there are little ships that ride along with us and I read this story many, many times, and I've never seen this. The little ships that were falling along behind the ship that Jesus was in. You see, the storm was upsetting to the disciple, but it wasn't bothering God at all. Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat. It was not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. And that's what I wanted to see this morning. The grand scheme of things. So, why are these words here? Why are these nine little words placed here in this passage of Scripture? And there were also with him other little sheep. Have you ever wondered why am I here? Have you ever wondered why is this church here? I believe with all of my heart that this is part of the reason why the church is here. We're situated in this community and we're set up as this vessel that's carrying Christ to the world. Amen. You see, in the midst of our sea, whether we are floating along on the gentle waters or in the midst of one of life's more violent storms. We're not by ourselves. Amen. Thank God. We have little ships riding along next to us. Every one of us are on the sea of life in a perpetual state of peace or storm. Right. The world is going on all around us and right along with us are little ships. Running right along with this church or little ships. Right here in this community. Seated right here next to this good old gospel ship are thousands of little ships. The disciple boat wasn't the only boat on the lake that day. And church, I want to tell you this morning that crossing first isn't by itself either. 
Right. The little ships were following them the whole time. The little ships are those lesser than you. Uh -huh. Those not as mature as you are. Those first to be destroyed in the storms of life and those that don't have Jesus yes, yes, right. in the boat with them. There are little ships that are watching your response to the storm. There are little ships that are watching you bail the walk. Preach. Do you know that you're a hero to some little ship? Amen. Amen. Do you realize that you are an example to some little ship? Right. Did you know that your attitude is going to affect the rowing of some little ship and your demeanor is going to affect the destination of some little ship? Amen. You see, it's not about the boat with Jesus in it. It was about the little ship that didn't have the Lord in their boat. How many little ships follow us around every day? How about our children? <laughs> We come to church, we sing and we shout and sometimes we leave worn out and exhausted. It's a long and quiet drive back to the house. The little ones are right there in the back seat. Uh -huh. And I've seen these things happen. You know, if we get in the car and the door doesn't get closed before we start crucifying the pastor or some other church member. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm. You give them a proper eulogy, funeral, and burial before you ever get pulled into your driveway. Huh? Now we might know that we're just shooting our mouth off or blowing off steam, but do our children and grandchildren understand that? Or even our spouse? You see, these are little ships uh, that we are helping to sink in the midst of our storm. You've heard that old saying, loose lips sink ships? Well, that old saying is true. Uh -huh. Your boat is filling up with waves. The waves are the natural everyday obstacles of life. And your impulse is to bail out the wall. Hey, hey, don't you see us down here? Why don't you pay attention to what you're doing? When you're building the water out of your ship, Make sure you're not throwing it into some little shit. And the reason for that thing is because the little ships are getting hit hard enough by the way themselves already. That's right. Don't flood the little ships with the water you are bailing out. Come on, somebody. You see, when the big ships shoot their cannons off, And they begin to say things like, I don't know who that fellow thinks he is, but that's my job. And I'm going to show him once and for all, he don't own his church. When we start saying things like, can you believe what Sister showed it all had on this morning? The nerve of that woman. Can you believe what the pastor preached on this morning? How dare he'll preach on gambling? He knows we go to the boat. Come on, great, great. And there's a whole lot of examples I could use this morning, but the point is this: when Christians begin to crucify others, the fallout from their words and actions is huge, and it hurts and it harms the little ships that are following along. And you bail out some more water out of your storm battered life. Uh, man, I've had enough of this. I'm done. Good uh, yeah, I don't know part of it. Are you pouring it into some other little shoe? And there were also with him other little shoes. You see, the words that we speak and the attitude that we have have an effect on the little ships that are around us. Yeah. 
sometimes immature Christians, baby Christians, young Christians are hurt and offended. The little ships are offended by something that the big ship does. And there are also with him other little ships. Little ships that are following you. Little ships that are watching how you handle your storm. Little ships that don't have the resiliency that you do. Little ships that are looking to you in their walk of faith. These little ships can be maybe Christians or immature Christians. They can even be people who have no relationship at all with Jesus Christ. So in your death rebelling and throwing out the water over the bow, don't sink the little ship. Uh -huh. They don't have the same relationship with the Lord that you have. Amen. They don't have a living experience of the 23rd Psalm in their life that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You see, Jesus might not be in the boat with him. Yeah. And what we say and what we do has an effect on what the little ships do. They haven't lived through enough storms to know that a thousand may fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. They haven't lived it because they are big, they aren't big ships, they're little ships. They don't have the experience that we don't that we have. They don't have the relationship with Christ that we have. They're not as mature as we are. And we need to be mindful of the leaderships that are constantly following us around. Amen. The dependence of the leadership making it to their destination is directly affected by what you do. Whether you know it or not, child of God, you might be the big ship that somebody is watching. And if they're following you, are they going to make it to their destination? God. Help us, God. I honestly believe that part of the reason for the horrible storm that blew into the lives of those disciples that day was to demonstrate godly faith for the little ships. But one thing that I did notice in the story was this, uh, they knew where to go. Amen. Jesus was in their ship. He was in the boat with them and they went to Him. Where do we go when we get into trouble? Where do we turn to when the storm begins to blow in our life? Are we being a good example to the leadership that are following behind? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Maybe the storms in your life are, are partly so God can demonstrate the life of faith in Jesus Christ to the leadership that are around you. Yeah, yeah. See, we need to see the big picture Amen. of the things that are going on. Can you say amen? amen? We have to keep in mind the real issues of the storm this morning. In verse 37, the scripture says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the wave beat into the ship so that it was now full. There were two obstacles that had to be overcome. The first was the wind. The great storm of wind is a symbol of the spiritual obstacle that we as Christians face. The devil is called the prince and the power of the air. And he is determined to hinder your journey. Right. Because when he hinders your journey and he affects your journey, uh -huh. then it affects those little ships that are yeah. following along behind you. Yeah. You see, the Bible says that our warfare is not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh -huh. And the other obstacle that had to be overcome was the waves. You see, the waves are a symbol of the natural obstacle. The wind, uh, 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 a symbol of the spiritual obstacle. But the waves are a symbol of the natural obstacle that we face, like people and their attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know that you understand that when the waves, which are the natural obstacle, came against the disciples and battered the boat, that they were spurred on by the wind, which are the spiritual 
obstacle. Now hang on, I'm going somewhere. Uh -huh. You see, the spiritual obstacle called the problems in the natural. Yeah, yeah. People are just fine until the devil's wind starts blowing. Church goes along just fine until the wind of the devil stirs up waves in the natural. The devil stirs up good and well-meaning folks and they become the waves that batter our ships. And how many little ships have been lost because they've been battered by the waves that the devil has stirred up in church folks? Amen. How many of us ever heard this statement? Oh, don't let the devil use you. And he can. Sometimes we don't even realize that he's doing it. And the point that I want you to see this morning, the point that I'm trying to make is we need to be mindful of the little shifts. Y'all know what I'm talking about this morning. You see, the one that ends up paying the price are the children. The baby Christians. Or the unsaved fellow riding along next to you in a little ship. Right. God help us to look out for the little ships. Let me show you a principle embedded in this scripture. Mark chapter 4 and verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. Yeah. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. You know how I know that the wind is representative of the devil? Because the Bible said that Jesus arose. Aren't you glad that He got up? Aren't you glad, hallelujah, that He got up for you and me? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that Jesus arose because we were about to be crushed? But He got up. We were about to be stoned, but He got up.
These little fights uh, that we're fighting are senseless and they're stupid in the face of losing a single little ship. Amen. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying some of, some of the little stuff that we do. Come on. Some of the things that we say, uh, we don't think twice about offending someone. We don't think twice about hurting somebody's feelings. And we're supposed to be the peacemakers of God. Amen. 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 Listen, turmoil and anger and hatred and spite and all of these things shouldn't be coming out of the mouth of a Christian because our goal is peace. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you something this morning. Whenever a storm comes into your life, if you look to Him, He'll speak peace. Yes, Amen. yes. In your life. Yes. Amen. Amen. But we're so busy being the big ships that we don't even see the little ones that are falling behind. Amen. Hmm. See, you've got to determine this morning is this thing a wind? Because if it's a wind, it's a spiritual thing that's coming from the enemy. Hello? Amen. And we've got to determine, is this thing a wind? If it is, then we need to rebuke it. Amen. But here's where we get messed up sometimes. Then we have to ask ourselves, is this thing a wave? Because if it is, then there has to be a wind behind it too. Because the water don't move on its own. Amen. The water represents people. Uh -huh. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Man, we want to jump on. We want to jump on the person that's attacking us. Uh -huh. We want to get back at the person that's hurting us. And what we need to realize this morning is not that person that we've got the problem with. The, the, the problem is with the wind behind the wind. Amen. Right. So if we will realize that it's the wind and we know, hallelujah, that even though a wave may be coming against us, we also need to realize it's not the wave, it's the wind that's pushing the wave. Right? That we need to rebuke. We just want to rebuke the person. We just want to jump on the wave. Ride the wave to the ground. But we're rebuking the wrong thing. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. I want to close this morning. With this. We've got to get these little ships to the other side. Amen. Amen. God help me control my belly. Amen. When the storm, when the storms are blowing through my life and my boat's beginning to fill up. Lord help me, help me when I start bailing the water out. That I make sure I don't throw it over into one of those little ships. Right. What are you talking about, Pastor? Sometimes we need to just take it to the Lord. Amen. 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 Sometimes we, we, it ain't it funny? Ain't it funny how we want everybody to know we're mad? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I'm going through a storm and I want everybody to know it. That brother, sister, so and so wave that's coming against me, I, I want them to know I'm mad. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. oh, Amen. Forget the wave. Uh -huh. Look at the wind. Amen. God help me control my feelings. 
Help me control my idle words. You know that the Bible said that we're going to stand accountable for every idle word that we speak. Oh, we even the folks that don't like to talk like to talk when they get mad. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God help me control my will. Help me control my idle words. Help me not to sink some little ship because I was so desperate I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Come on. I wonder how many little ships have been sunk along the way. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if I've ever sunk you. Right. Come on, think about this. We in the big ship. And most of us got Jesus in the boat with us. And just because we think Jesus is in the boat, is in the boat with us, we got a right to fill our water anywhere we want to. We got a right to say whatever we want to say whenever we get ready to say. Jesus is in the boat. We ain't in that boat. Get them out of that boat into this boat. If the love of God is not working Amen. in our lives. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me if I have spoken an ill word against any of your servants. Forgive me if I have blamed the waves for what was the wind's fault. Yeah. Because I want the little ship to get over to the other side. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. See, it's not just about us. In the big boat with Jesus. I believe that story had everything to do with leadership and following along. Amen. How is the leadership going to know how to get to shore? They're not watching the big ship. How's the little ship going to get to its destination without watching the big ship? A lot more at stake than what we realize. Amen. Amen. Lord, help me. I always be mindful of the little ship. Amen. That I may help them get through the wind and the waves. Good word. To their eternal destination. Amen. So I ask you one more time this morning, church. Is the little ship watching you? The little ship going to get to its destination. <coughs> How many of you ever heard folks make this statement? I'm not hurting anybody but myself. Mm. It's not true. Because the way we live our lives, whether we're Christians or not, there's a little ship somewhere. Watching you. Amen. Whether it's a child, 
your child or a grandchild or somebody else's child. A baby Christian, a young person in the Lord, maybe they're watching you. Because they want to know how to walk by faith. So they're watching you. Is the big ship Is the big ship setting a good example for the little ship? That's the question this morning. If the little boat falling, the big boat is is the little boat when it gets to its destination. I know that I had to preach like I'm home to preach. Oh, great, great. And why? Come on. But I'm just sharing the message that God gave to me. Amen. 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 I split ships. They're following you. Whether you whether you realize it or not. They're there. How you handle the storm. Little storm, big storm. They're watching how you handle the storm. I've got Jesus in my boat. All will be handling the storm just fine. Whether it's a little storm or a big storm. Because Jesus is in the boat with me. Amen. I want them little. I want them little ships. I want them little. Amen. Me too. Have Jesus in the boat with them. Me too. Amen. Because one day the little ship will become a big ship. Yeah. <laughs> Whether it's a little ship in the natural or a little ship in the spiritual. One day, we're looking for the little sheep to become a big sheep. When they become a big sheep, then there's going to be some little sheep watching them. Everything we do has an effect on the little sheep. Would you stand with me?